Good evening and greetings. Welcome to another Conversations With, where we talk to our Facebook friends live. Um, friends of ours that are living the dream. Um, they got a passion and a spiritedness about themselves. And with this being a Facebook Live, fingers crossed, everything works fine. So with that being, uh, my, uh, my name is Sig Taylor, and I'm coming to you live from the Emerald Coast of Florida, where we are um, a little bit chilly. I think it's about 60 degrees today. And as she's coming on here, tell you a little bit about her. Her name is Donna Barbara, and I've been, um, it's been a pleasure to be their friends for many, many years. Uh, Donna, uh, who in 1986 won the world, made history. Hey, history. History. Oh, we got oh, somebody popping, popping in, in here. Hey, 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 hey. Don, how, Don, are, how you? are you? Doing good, man. Sorry about that. That's, that's okay. okay. I was going to say, okay. you, don't, you, don't, you look, don't look, don't like, look Donna. like Donna. I hear you, brother. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, yeah, we got friends popping on all over the place. I'm going to have, have Don uh, read on at some point. So, but um, in 1980. Six, uh, Donna made world history um, by becoming uh, the first woman to win um, a horse championship in a, in a field that was dominated by just exclusively men. Not only men, but I'm talking about men who came from very, very wealthy ranches. And as we get her adding, looks like she's coming on board here. That's what I love about doing Facebook Lives. I said to myself, what am I doing? Donna, can you hear me? I hear you now. Oh, wonderful. All right. Well, great to have you. I've already made an introduction um, about you. And I would really like to start out right now is when you were a small child. You actually grew up in Southern California. Is that correct? Okay. She's freezing out a little bit here. Donna, can you hear me? Now you're back. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Start where you grew up. You grew up in Southern California, and your favorite aunt and uncle lived about two and a half hours from you. Let's start there. About your childhood. Yeah, I grew up in a in a rural, really rural area called Agora Hills. Um, in fact, we couldn't. We had to go the, to uh, uh, about twenty miles just to get a grocery store. And wonderful. There was cattle, horses, and it was really wonderful. And my aunt and uncle lived in San Diego, which is a two and a half hour drive. Um, so I didn't get to see him as much as I would have liked. Wonderful. And, you know, um, I just want to interrupt here real quick. As people are jumping on board, just hit like and share. Uh, this is a phenomenal story. We're, we want to make sure that everyone hears the passion from Donna, her dream that she's been living since she's been a child. So give me, give me, an ex give me like your first experience because your aunt and uncle, they owned a horse ranch, correct? Um, yeah, they, they, um, Started out real small. My uncle was an attorney, specializing in equine law, and became the president of the Desert Arabian Horse Association in San Diego area, and uh, got a mare and bred her. And that's and, where I got my Abu. And, 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 <laughs> and out came Abu. Now, so, yeah. so, but I, I want to talk to you. When did you? You know, you, at an early age, you were fascinated with the horses. So, what would you do? Um, they had an arena right outside the house, correct? Or was it across the street? Bring us up to that. Well, yeah. When you came into the ranch, um, my aunt and uncle's house was kind of, um, it was kind of on the hill and the yes. driveway to the barns and the stables ran below their house. And then on the other side of that was the working arena. Wonderful. And so your uncle Ken and aunt Linda, they started out really small, but you, how old were you when you started going over there and watching the horses and, 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 and what happened? Well, uh, I, I went over there, uh, you know, from when I was very young. And, um, so there was horses there for me to go pet and, and, uh, and play with. And then when they got their mare and bred her, I was nine years old when Abu, uh, was born and um, uh, he was, I thought he was magnificent. Yeah. And, and he was an Arabian horse, but it turned out what during that time, and by the way, what, shoot, 
back in the 70s, which uh, I don't want to date you. <laughs> date you us. too old there? Oh, yeah, I know. Man, I want to get in trouble here. <laughs> um, but what year was that? Do you remember? Kind of, you were nine years old. And... Yeah, Avi was born March 10th, 1970. Okay. Um, I remember when he was born, he was black, which I had, you know, a kid, black beauty, of course, and just thought he was the most beautiful thing. Nobody told me he was going to turn gray. <laughs> well, I don't know yeah. about you, but um, they didn't tell me that either. Here. <laughs> right, right, right. And Absolutely. he, uh, um, he, I thought he was just the most wonderful thing on earth. Um, uh, however, at, at that time, the Arabian industry changed their dynamics in the in the way the horses were. They wanted a more longer legged, sleek, and he was more foundation, champion bred all the way back. Um, short, stocky. I mean, most okay. people look at him and think he was a quarter horse. Absolutely. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So as fate would have it, because the, the Arabian horses, which he was a purebred, you told me he came from royalty, correct? Yeah, Is he that... had some really royal bloodlines, um, and horses so... that were in record books. Wow. So we have an Arabian horse, but at the time, it was um, the way they were breeding the Arabians was changing again to a more sleeker. And mm -hmm. as fate would have it, your uncle said, what, was it a happy birthday or was it Christmas or what? <laughs> well, um, I, you know, you couldn't keep me from Abu. I, it, okay. I grab breakfast, run down there and stay. I don't care what, how they threaten me, no lunch, whatever. I didn't care. Um, I, he, he was my whole world at that point. So, uh, they tried sending to him trainer at two years old. Yes. Um, he didn't have the best attitude and stubborn, um, stubborn, stubborn, gritty. Uh, he didn't was listen. Tough. No, he was tough. I didn't help things. I was a kid. I didn't know what I was doing. I was yes. playing with him, hanging all over him, probably uh -huh. doing everything that you should never do. And so, so when he got to the trainer, they were just like, oh, this is a mess. So he would you would like you say it. that would you say the comment of two peas in the pod would probably be correct? Oh, we were definitely fit for each other. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and I'm teasing Donna here because she is so feisty and she's such a go-getter in life. <laughs> And, um, and so anyway, by the way, as you're coming on here, hit like and share because this story, we want to share this with everyone because it is a heartwarming story. It's a, it's a dream come true. And so, but, but I want to back up just a little bit because you, as you, every time you'd go over to your aunt and uncles, I, I remember you telling me that you'd sneak out at night um, mm -hmm. when the arena was lit up because a lot of times they did the training at night, correct? They did. There was a trainer there training the uh, quarter horses for cutting. Yes. And um, so, yeah, I snuck out <laughs> of the house and yes. would sit along the, the walkway there overlooking the arena and yes. just watch with utter awe as they trained those horses. And um, my aunt and uncle knew what I was doing. I, I'm sure... I wasn't that good at it, but. Um. <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, you, you knew from an early age you had a love. And so, you know, again, we'll fast forward a little bit here. Abu is born a couple years later. The trainer's just going, I can't do nothing with this horse. And your uncle, your aunt and uncle say. Well, I could, Abu and I got along uh, just great. And they knew I loved him. Um, yeah. They, I worshiped him. And, uh, we had moved on to this little ranch uh, in Agora Hills and uh, they brought him up. And at first I thought they were just going to let him come stay with me for a while. But then on my birthday, they gave me his registration papers and said, here you go. Happy birthday. And oh it my was gosh. the best moment in my life. Yeah. It Something you'll never forget. I, I remember the first time um, I uh, we were talking about that earlier. I got my horse. I was so excited that I actually, yeah. we both ran home together. His name was Lightning Joe. So I, I know that feeling that you have <laughs> when you, you know it's yours It's like, uh, and, and that point. So now, now Abu is yours and you're, now you're starting to start, hey, I, want, I need to earn some money like we all 
have to. And you start going around to the neighborhood because it's all horse ranches and start asking and tell me how that happened and, and well, proceeded. You know, I, I just, I, I needed, I had a horse and a dog to feed. So, <laughs> um, you had to, I, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so, you know, you back then, you, I think you made 50 cents an hour of babysitting. So basically, I think I was paid 50 cents to a dollar a ride. Babysitting and I horses. Care. Yeah, yes. I, I didn't care. I got to ride all these horses, all these breeds, all these different characters and um, things that would come along when I was riding. It taught me so much to listen, to be patient, to be humble, uh, and wow, that's a was, discipline. That's it, good it discipline. Was great. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, you trained Abu yourself? Yeah, I, I, we might say we trained each other. Each yeah. Other. Well, <laughs> it, it's that sounds about right. You're right about that. Um, I, because I, again, you said the discipline and everything that comes. Then you guys both started to work together. So you're earning some money at the local horse ranches, ba pretty much babysitting, getting a ride. I'm getting to understand other horses and everything. Yeah. Um, what comes next? It, are, are you 18, 19 now? And you start to say, Hey, I yeah. need to, I want to continue in the horse profession. Um, or did you start wanting to compete right away? Where'd you see the money? No, no, that you I, needed to earn? Uh, yeah, no, I, um, I knew I was no near ready in my, my knowledge of horses to do anything like that. Okay. Uh, I needed a job, a real job. Yes. And I, and I always knew, my whole life, I wanted to work with horses, so I went to a, a cutting horse trainer, and and uh, you know, in that day, that really wasn't something that a lot of girls did. And I asked for a job, and th those good old cowboys, they'll say, "Okay, you think you can do it? Let's see what you got." And you know, he told me to get on this horse, and he told me to do some things, and he said, "All right, okay." So. Uh, I went to work, and so you didn't get any free pa up. You didn't get any free passes or anything because you're a girl. Oh no! I started clean stalls, grooming horses, riding the older horses, keeping them mm -hmm. legged up. Um, then started um, in the training pen, um, riding the turn back horse when we were practicing. He was a snaffle bit trainer, so okay. um, so yeah, no, there's no free passes. You work your way up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely good. So um, yeah, again, for those who are watching who love horses, but maybe not know, because there's so many different uh, um, aspects to horses, but you were mainly focused in on the cattle horses, which at that time were dominated by quarter horses, correct? Exactly. It was a quarter horse world and a pretty much a man's world. Okay. Um, and so here comes, yeah. here comes a um, Arabian named Abu and here comes Donna, correct? So, yeah, we were, we were, we had a bunch of owners out. We had 20 horses in training. We had a bunch of owners out and I was turning back and all of a sudden I ran out of horses. I ran out of, I used them all up. So I said, well, I'll go get my horse. And he really, what could we do? I had to get a horse. So yes. boy, I, I knew I was in for it. I knew I was going to hear it. Everybody had comments to make, you know, about the Arab and yeah, but, um, and I thought, oh, please don't make me look bad. And <laughs> and we got in there, and I kind of just made some moves on the cow, back and forth, real easy, real slow. And he just got it. I mean, he just got it. He went to work like he knew what he was doing. And it, my my boss even said, um, hey, you know, maybe I should ride that horse a little bit for you um on cattle and let's see what he's got and I was like no we don't this is my horse I'll ride my horse absolutely and, uh, good good I, for I you I never let anybody ride him no wow that's amazing because you guys you 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 I mean you guys but you both were a team and mm -hmm. it's like yeah I under, completely understand I completely understand so here we go um you're starting to starting to now say hey Abu's got something here. When did you recognize that? Right away, that first time? Did you recognize that right he, away. He, he got it, right? He started he to kind it. of figure it out? Yeah, you know, you can, you can make a horse work cattle, but you can't make a horse be a cutting horse. 
it, it, it's in them or it's not. I mean, you make it, you can make him do it. Yes. Like, I didn't make him do it. I showed him what I wanted him to do and he loved it. And he, he excelled and he just, uh, he got down so low on the ground to eyeball that cow that the dirt would clump up on top of my legs. It just fly oh. up on my leg. Oh my gosh. I was like, my feet were inches from the ground. So, yeah. so again, those of you who are not familiar with horses or maybe are, but don't understand the cutting horses. So Abu would pick a cow in the herd. And that's the reason I call it a herd because the job was to keep one of those cows out of the herd. And of course, what does a cow want to do? Go right back into the herd. And he was phenomenal at, at doing that. Correct. Oh, he was amazing. Amazing. He, he, he wanted to eyeball them. He, yes. did, he wanted to get his head and body down to their level and, and, and move like a dog at play, you know, back yes. and forth. And, yes, absolutely. And he would splatter, what they call splatter, where both legs would go apart from each other in the front oh. and he, his head would be down on the ground. Oh, that's eyeballing. amazing. Oh, that is yeah, so cool. It was, it was something. It was just in him. It was just in him. Wow. Those of you who are joining now and want to share this, I just hit like and share. Um, this is an amazing story. It's a dream come true for Donna Borba here, who now happens to live in Central California, a little town called Escalon. But uh, she was originally raised and grew up in uh, Southern California. So when did you start competing? That's exciting. I, because now you're going to take it to the next level, correct? And of course, this is, again, a men's sport. Yeah. I needed to. I needed more money than I was making. And okay. um, the... Uh, we were, I was working uh, for outside ranches, gathering cattle. Cattle would get lost in the hills, and we'd go get them back. And um, somebody okay. told me about H Cattle Company by, um, owned by Arlie Harvey and Billy May. And it was a huge – I, I, I want to say somebody told me it was a 6,000-acre cattle ranch, and they had uh, competitions there. Okay. And – um, where all the big ranchers from all around would come and compete against it. It's kind of a fun thing, but they had awards and you could win money. So I thought, okay, well, I need the money, so I'll give it a try. Really didn't know what I was getting myself into. And, um, of course, I got there, got my horse out of the trailer, and he kind of just moseyed along like he always did. And then they brought the cattle in, and then he was like, okay. He'd pick himself up and kind of strut his way in there. And, here, you know, here comes the comments from everybody, you know, an Arab. Oh, my God, it's an Arab, you know. Oh, my gosh. And, so, uh, again, we got some people joining us right now. So we, we've got a woman who was unheard of competing in a man's world. And we have an Arabian horse <laughs> in a quarter horse world. Yeah. Oh, that had to be, I mean, did you feel us, what was, what was going through your mind? Now, I understand what Abu, he saw those, he saw that, those cattle in that herd and he got fired up, but what was your thought? Did you, did you, you had to feel a little bit like, oh, what am I doing here? Or no? Oh my God. I thought, I, 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 I scared to death. What the <laughs> heck am I doing here? I see, you know, the Bohards and the Leonards and, uh, the Harmons for H Cattle Company. What, what in the world was I thinking, you know? And uh, but I'm there now. I can't like just sneak away. And all <laughs> I could think of is, oh my God, I'd hope I don't make a fool of myself. And um, what happened? You won. <laughs> you won. Oh, that is terrific. That's. Your, I bet you you had some people going. What just happened? We, I mean, especially us men. I mean, I'm a, I'm a man, and listen, I know how we are. And um, <laughs> I'm humble. I'm humble. But let me tell you what. A girl beats me. It's sometimes tough. And how did they take it? Because this is back in the day. This is not nowadays. It's like, okay, you won, Donna. Great. Let's shake hands. A hug. Back then, it was a man. It was a man. Cowboys. Well, I, you know, I, I would say that they kind of were um... – very, very nice to me. Very nice oh, to me. Oh, good. Um, I think they knew that I, I just felt really uncomfortable. Um, oh, that's And wonderful. I think because Abu worked a cow the way that he worked a cow, mm -hmm. that the first questions was that, of course, he couldn't be all Arab. He had to be some quarter horse in Arab. He's got to be quarter horse. Right, yes. right. And, um, but I think when they saw him get down and dirty with a cow, 
that helped, you know, and I was smart enough to stay out of my horse's way and let him do his job. Um, Good. But I Wonderful. was intimidated. Every time I went, I mean, I, I, he never got defeated. Never. So um, let me see if I got this right. Abu, every time you competed with your horse, Abu, you've never yeah. lost once. He never lost. Oh never lost. It didn't, it didn't matter if it was working cow horse, if it was a stock horse class, if it was penning. Oh, it didn't matter wow. if it was a team penning. I um, mean, wow. he won every team penning event from 1986 to 1988. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Tell me what happened in 1986, because something major happened. It was a, the world championship. It, it was the first time that they had started it. Mm -hmm. And then again, the jitters come back. What am I doing? But the money would be so good. What if I won that, you know, so I, yeah, I didn't have any money. I, I, I slept in my trailer. It was a three day event. I made Abu sleep outside tied to the trailer and, and living, I live in the dream. Just, just thinking, you know, hearing my dad's voice in my head, you know, it, you could do anything you, you want to do. If you give it a hundred percent, it doesn't matter what it is. Oh, that's wonderful. And I thought, okay, well, if my dad said that, that's good. That's golden. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's a lot of wisdom right there from your father. And that helped you. Yeah. That right there it, helped it, you. It did. It was the voice that made me think, oh. don't back down. Don't chicken out. Yeah, they are who they are. Mm -hmm. But um, if you give it your best, you, 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 can't, you can't put your head down. You, you gave it your best. Yeah. Let's, and, let's hold that thought right there. Uh, we're going to take a real quick break here. Um, we'll be back in two and two. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're back from break now. <laughs> and um, we just, we left off Donna where I said, hold that thought about what your dad said and about going into the 1986 uh, world championship. Yeah, pinning horses, um, pinning. Yeah. And um, of course you won because you just told us before that Abu won everything. What did that do? What did that do for you in your career? Well, it, and Abu's it career. launched, it launched um, my ability to get jobs at different ranches because I wanted to work at all the big ranches. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ride as many young horses as I could. And I wanted the the knowledge that I could learn from these ranchers um, working, starting young horses. We started 20 to 30 young colts every year. Wow. And um, I, 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 I just craved the knowledge and I knew I needed to get it from as many big time ranch guys that were out there competing and winning as I could um, to get well rounded. And it, it launched me into starting my own training facility and um, I was blessed because I ended up having more horses in training that I could possibly handle and wow. um, a waiting well, list. You know, there's something that you said that makes so much sense is you, you knew you needed to gain wisdom. Okay. Um, you had that raw instinct that, that got you this far and you went to people that were successful. And, you know, when I'm teaching people in business or in life, I always tell them, you want to be successful at something, find the most successful person and, and, and just yeah. be make sure that they're willing to teach you. Because there's some successful people that aren't willing to teach anybody. But there are enough people out there that you can grab a nugget here and a grab a nugget there. And that's powerful. Um, thanks, Donna, for sharing that. So 1988, you decided to retire Abu. Yeah, he had won everything he attempted to win um, against in, and in open competition um, against quarter horses. So um, that going down the road from place to place and competing and coming home, it, it started to wear on him a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, not that he wanted to quit, mind you. Yes. But he, we had plenty of cattle here that we needed to go gather and separate and, and work. And, and so I knew he could still do what he loved, but he didn't need to prove anything else. Um, he, you, he'd you, done everything yeah, you, he no. could. Wonderful. Um, now, in your career, how many horses do you do you think you've you've had the chance and the um, to train? Do you have a? Oh my gosh! <laughs> hundreds, <laughs> Alvin, hundreds. 
hundreds. Alvin remembers horses every now and then. He goes, remember that that yes. colt that you started? And I'm like, yes. No, you know the funny yeah. thing is, is when you've when you've trained hundreds and hundreds of horses, which I was blessed with that opportunity. Yes. Yeah. Um, you remember the really, really tough ones and the really great ones, but the, all the other ones in between, you don't remember so well. <laughs> but, I understand. Um, I understand. It all yes. came from Abu. It, 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 yes. I never would have had the opportunity if, if Abu hadn't proved himself and made me look good. <laughs> well, I think a lot, a lot of, I think so. it's a 50, 50. That was a really a great partnership. And so, but after you retired Abu, um, you were still able to, uh, because he had it in him, around around your mm -hmm. ranch and everything around your ranch you're still able to um, have them have some fun with the cattle correct yeah i still we'd have big brandings you know where we go gather cattle on a couple thousand acres and yeah. um yeah, my husband's family and and it's, he still got the same reaction um i still had people offering me blank checks coming up to me, wow, that's a great horse. I'd really like to buy him. Here's yeah. how much do you want for him? And I'd say, well, I, I've been offered money before. I, I really appreciate it, but he's yes. my heart and my soul. I'll sell you my husband, but I won't <laughs> sell you my horse. <laughs> you know, you know and, and that's, you know, Donna, that's, that, that's special comment that you just made because you got into this to earn money and you earned a lot of money. Um, yeah. But when it came down to money, Albu, they gave you blank mm. checks. You could have filled them out to whatever you wanted. You chose not to because he was more to you than just money. And that's an important yeah. uh, right there nugget for people that yeah. um, it's not about the money sometimes, is it? It's not. You know, he was he he got me through some of the roughest, toughest times in my life. The loss of my dad and some really tough times. I just don't know if I would have made it. If he hadn't been there, um, what a, he what was a special relationship. What a special relationship, and um, he lived to a good good age, correct? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I kind of lost you there. Um, no, he he lived to a good age, correct? Can you yeah, he died just short of his thirtieth birthday. Um, he was having some issues and. Yeah. The vet said, just stay with him, be with him, because he wouldn't eat if I wasn't with him. Oh. And so um, I slept at the animal hospital with him. And, uh, but, you know, there, God prepares you for, for these things, and you know it's coming, and you just do the best to your, you're able to do for the one you love, you know. Absolutely. And it, it was time to let him go, so. Absolutely. Um Yes, and, and, and that's something that you'll cherish for the rest of your life. I, I, I know that we've talked about it before a few times, yeah. and I just appreciate that. Um, and there was a special story, special book written, correct? Um, Horses That yeah. Save Lives mm -hmm. by uh, Miss Dudley. Um, yeah. Tell us a yeah, little bit about approached, that. She approached me. Abu reached a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. that I didn't even know. And she approached me and... Um, Wanted to hear some stories about him, um, how special he was. Um, he had actually saved my life once, well, twice. Um, both were my fault. I put us yeah. both in a bad situation and yes. um, really didn't think I was going to come out, and he saved me. Wow. So, that's, yeah. That's <laughs> – wow, that, that, that relationship that you both had. And the book is called Horses That Save Lives by Miss Dudley, if you want to pick that up. Um, Donna is in there and well, that's just amazing. I, you know, I just really appreciate the time here this evening, you know, and, um, I know that, you know, you've been with horses all your life. You have other businesses. You're an entrepreneur. You, yeah. you're, I don't know, busy. Your picture's next, next to the, you know, in the dictionary. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, so, but I know you have multiple businesses. I know you're very successful. If somebody wanted to reach out to you and say, you know what? I'm really connect with Donna. How, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you, Donna? Um, I probably, uh, if you're on Facebook, um, which you are, if you're seeing this, uh, yes. Donna Atkins Borba. Wonderful. That's my Facebook. Okay. Uh, Alvin Donna Borba at hotmail.com. Okay. And so the email would be Alvin, A-L-V-I-N, Donna, mm -hmm. D-O-N-N-A, 
Borba, B-O-R-B-A, at hotmail.com. And I'll yeah. probably put a little link or something to that if somebody wants to get a hold of you. Um, one last thing. I just – could you share with us a gold nugget that somebody that's listening and watching this can take away and, say, and, and maybe they're stuck on a plateau or something. Just get move, you know, move them to the next level. Is there something you could share, a gold nugget? Yeah, if I don't mind me turning my back to you. I have no. something on the wall that I come in and look at when I'm feeling that maybe a little – down or you know life throws you a curveball yeah and it's called don't quit and it's when things go wrong as they sometimes will when the road you're trudging seems uphill when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh when care is pressing you down a bit rest if you must but don't you quit success is failure turned inside out the silver lining of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are and may be near even when it seems far. So stick wow. to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things go wrong that you mustn't quit. And I, it just goes back to everything my dad taught me and, and, and Abu and I facing, you know, um, a tough time getting going um, out there in, in a world where neither one of us seemed to fit. And uh, you just, you learn from these things and they make you better, stronger, and you never quit. If, if you're going to succeed, that means you can't quit. Wow. You had a great father. So, you had an absolutely I amazing did. father. Absolutely. Donna, um, thank you so much. I mean, uh, give Alvin a big hug for me. Um, you know, I miss <laughs> I you will. guys. You know, me being out yeah. here in California, I just can't come over all the time. Like, you know, <laughs> so, um, I know. you know, just thank you. It's been a pleasure to have you as a friend um, and as a guest on Conversations With. Um, you know, all my Facebook friends, you know, always lead with honor, honesty, and integrity. Always strive to be living your dream. Uh, we get one shot at this, guys. Um, we're not getting out of it alive. So sometimes you have to fight for it. Um, what's your dream? Okay. If you have any questions for me, I can be found at sigtaylor.com. V, go in peace, everybody, all right? Thank you, Don, and good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.